In today's crazy world, we're constantly using things we don't need, doing things we don't like, and never really moving forward or getting the results we're hoping for in either ourselves or our animals. Are you ready for a change? Join me, Wendy Patrick, your host on Quantumly Yours, Finesium Health's podcast, and become empowered to take control of you and your animals' health and well-being. We're all quantumly connected, so whether you're around the corner or around the world, it doesn't matter because we can help each other and all work together on our journeys. So come, join me and together we'll myth bust, share advice, knowledge, truths and suggestions to help you awaken, grow and continue your journey to a healthier, happier life. Hi folks and welcome to another episode of Quantumly Yours. As you can see it's another guest day and I am super excited to have this lovely lovely lady with me um, and we're going to be talking about all sorts of stuff. Just our usual intro housekeeping telling you to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends all about us. Find us on finessiumhealth.com, go search our site, go search our products, go search the testimonials and certainly as well, if you'd like to be our guest, get in touch because we love talking about all sorts of things, pet and personal. So without further ado, though, I am going to introduce you to the absolutely gorgeous Dana Humphreys. Thank you. Um, Thank you so much, most Wendy. might know you more as the actual pet lady, though. So maybe I should just say it. it's the pet lady. Hello. Hi. Uh, <laughs> no, I mean... Dana sent me this whole spiel of, you know, what she does, what she's done, all the rest of it. And she's got a PR company. She used to be seen all over the TV, everywhere with all pets and um, with her little um, French build, Frenchie. Did you have a Frenchie? That's my godson. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Charlie the Frenchie is my godson. I have two cats, but Charlie's oh, sweet on a lot of TV segments. <laughs> yep. Seen him on a lot of things. Um, and just, you know, going around and Dana sent me this little spiel about telling you who she is and everything else, but I don't think it covers half of it, but I did actually find something from her website. I just want to read this to you guys because it's so cool and it explains a lot. And I think it'll be great to introduce Dana and let her take over after this, but it basically said about, we've gone from Snoopy to Brian, a dog in a dog house away from the family to a smart, well-socialized pet who sits among us at the table and sleeps on our sofa and our inner beds. Then there's the extreme Brian, who you're dating, who has a drinking problem. <laughs> I just thought that was hilarious. So Dana, take it away, honey, because you're going to tell everybody much more than I can blather on about here and do it way more justice. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much, Wendy. Well, um, yeah, I love talking about pets and the personal. So this is this is a great show. Um, where can I begin? I mean, I've, I've always been a pet lover. Um, I convinced my family to get our first dog. Um, I went to school in California. I went, I have a degree in public relations and, um, my first job out of college, I, um, was taking care of the family dog, Winston. I'm a smushed face dog lover. And, um, and so I, I started working in the pet industry, um, doing public relations uh, for a place called Muttropolis. And then I, qu I quit and moved to New York City and started a PR firm called Whitegate PR. And along the way, um, positioned myself as the pet lady and got the trademark and the website and um, kind of through that work of um, promoting pet products and things like that, um, I started to write a book called Adventures with the Pet Lady. And as I was writing that, I really started seeing um, this 
kind of pattern of codependency in pets and mm. this, um, you know, kind of what you just described with the, the Brian and the Snoopy, um, you know, uh, reference um, and how, you know, even while I've been in the pet industry or in my lifetime, um, the way that we care for our pets has changed and shifted and they've become more of our own family members. And um, so while I was writing um, Adventures with the Pet Lady, it really became its own a whole different book. So I've kind of been writing this book for like eight years. And now, um, you know, in its most honest form, it's a memoir. And um, it was originally going to be, you know, tips and tricks for pet owners and kind of a coffee table book and things like that. And it's really shifted into a memoir about my life and my stories. And um, it's going to be coming out in November. And it's called May All Beings Be Fed. And oh, I'm very wonderful. Yeah, and um, I'm in the final editing stages right now, and um, yeah, and that'll that'll be coming out uh, November fourth. Wonderful, actually, that'll just have been the week before this airs. So, oh wow, great! This is going out November eleventh. Yes, we pre-record, folks. Sorry to burst your bubble; it's not live, <laughs> but we don't edit it, so. Sorry to interrupt, but yes, I just thought I'd put that in there for people's timelines. So the book yeah. is on the shelves now. Go and get it. So, <laughs> yeah. So it right. went into more of a memoir. And um, so what's it ended up being? What would you, if you had to put it into a box or a category, what is it? I mean, the category, the category is memoir. I mean, it's, it's definitely um, leans towards self-help category for sure um and um it's really more uh honest stories about kind of my life and um how i've gone to where i am now right do you want to give us a little bit of a tidbit on how you've ended up here well you know um i've i've traveled a lot in my life mm -hmm. um I've been to, I've been to over 80 countries and I've lived in a few. And um, so I think I have a perspective that is not necessarily shared by, by everybody. And um, yeah, I have some, you know, I just wanted to share my story. And I think that there's a lot of power in sharing stories and helps, um, you know, people feel more um, more belong, you know, more sense of belonging, you know, the yeah, more that yeah. we share our vulnerabilities and our trials and tribulations, I think the more that people can relate and feel more, um, okay in themselves. And that's really the, the point with this book. Um, I, during the quarantine, during the Corona time, um, I spent a few months in Guatemala and that was really, I guess, um, a pivotable, pivotable, <laughs> making up a new word, <laughs> pivotal time for me. Um, and so the book starts out there and um, really um, living in Guatemala helped me really slow down and take a look at my life and um, look at what I was spending my life force energy on. and. Um, really take a turn to um, help people and help pets and um, not necessarily be a marketer and, and be promoting um, things all the time, but really to focus more on the health and well-being of, um, of ourselves. And so through that time, I've launched a life coaching business and um, I do, I'm a Reiki person. I do Reiki on people and pets. Um, my cats love it. And um, yeah, and that's part of the part of the, the tale. Part of the tale. <laughs> no pun intended at all. No, none. Um, yeah. No, it's, it's super exciting to hear that because I think um, a lot of people's focus has changed dramatically in the past year and a half to two years. I know mine has as well and certainly come in line with almost this whole awakening of finding out what you're doing here like you know what's what's this whole game about 
and yeah. why are you here and I'm doing the same thing here on the show um with sort of bearing my soul in a sense with certain other stories as well um to try and help someone else because the biggest thing is when you feel that you're so alone that nobody can possibly understand what you're going through yeah and especially we did one a uh, couple of months back on suicide and yeah. um just the the difficulty with that and certainly the 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 rates that that's gone through the roof which is horrible yeah. Um, but letting people know that they're not alone and that trying to explain to the people who've never experienced some of these other parts of, of others journeys where they've they've hit a wall or they've hit that depression or something. And, you know, they don't understand when you say to someone, oh, go and cheer up, it'll be fine, that you don't understand how to cheer up because you don't even know what that feels like. So it's important to share our stories and our journeys and everything else. And we're all on one. And it's just nice to know that as opposed to having to have a support group where you can actually stand strong within yourself and now go, okay, well, I'm going along here too. And you don't need me to be here, but I'm here if you want me. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. I saw that the, the, the title of your other book, the um, Barking Down the Leash of Codependency. That was that was one of the titles along the way. Yes. OK. So I, there's no multiple books. There is just one book that okay. is coming out. All right. All be fed. But there's yeah, that it's it had so many different um, formations and now it's finally I think in its most truest uh form so there we go okay so we just uh yeah we're, we I like the, the the term I use a lot where that that one's not right we just change horses again yeah um, so no can now it says as well um Dana you were saying that you're a death doula what is that so a death doula, just like maybe some people are familiar with a birth doula, mm -hmm. um, birth doulas um, are advocates for for the mom um, and, and really listening to their needs and making sure the set and setting is comfortable for them. The death doula, we do the same for the dying person. So as someone might be in transition um, into the act of dying process, we are making sure that their wants and needs and desires are being are being met and that and we're at, adding ritual back into the dying process so um if someone has been given let's say three months to live or six months to live and they're going to be living out those days at home perhaps in hospice care um we are we're there to listen to them and advocate for them we're not there to give them any medicine or administer any tubes or anything like that that's what the hospice nurse and hospice team does we're there to like listen to their emotional needs maybe they have um a secret or a story that they've never been able to tell anyone even their um. spouse or their brother um, because they've feared you know judgment or criticism um, once the we're really there to hold space for them and let them just you know let go let go of whatever they need to let go of and then once they get into the actual scientific act of dying process which can take anywhere from two days to two weeks you know our belief is that the more that they've been able to let go the quicker that that process will happen. And we're all about ha the person having a good death. Um, and that is, you know, one that is fairly quick, fairly painless, um, is, is not alone, right? And there's somebody there with them holding their hand or sitting with them. And it could be, um, it could be us, it could be a loved one. Um, you know, as a death doula, we might we might walk them through some guided visualizations if they're having some extreme pain. Um, you know, just really kind of helping them to feel calm and um, ready for the transition that they're about to make. And um, some things that we can help with the family is, you know, sometimes people's 
plans change, you know, like maybe they wrote their will when they were 30 years old and they bought their plot of land when they were 45 and now they're 85 and they have a whole different thought process about what happens in the afterlife or that they want to suddenly be cremated, even though their entire lineage has been buried at this special, you know, burial grounds. Mm -hmm. So we're there to also help have those conversations with their family. If the family is not understanding or not compassionate towards their change in wishes, um, we're, we're there to make sure that whatever they want is withheld and is upheld. Mm -hmm. And, um, and sometimes also to hold space for the family that might be, um, you know, saddened by what's happening and the loss that they're experiencing. Um, so we help together, we help the, the dying person and their family um, come up with different projects. It could be a legacy project. Maybe grandma had all these amazing recipes that she never wrote down. We could be there to just transcribe them and write them down and hand them over so it can be turned into um, a nice, you know, memento for all the grandkids or something like that so that the grandma's legacy continues. So then it makes it a little bit easier for grandma to leave knowing that she's left a little piece of herself behind and it can be a little bit easier for the family to let go because they have something to keepsake to remind them of her and maybe you know once a year on her anniversary of her death they have a potluck and everyone makes one of grandma's recipes or mm. you know we help come up with ideas like this that help just make the the transition easier for everybody um one idea that i love um in thinking about my own um you know, death at some point is, you know, I would love to have a glitter station. So anybody that comes in to visit me, they have to visit the glitter station and they can put glitter on themselves. They can put glitter on each other. They can come put some glitter on me, you know, but to just really bring some lightness to it and some fun. Um, and of course, you know, the glitter station is not going to be for everybody. That's okay. Um, something that, you know, is something that we could recommend is like having a gratitude chair. So maybe, you know, there's lots of family and friends coming to visit and they, you know, as they come in, it's like, just sit down on the gratitude chair, you know, take your shoes off, decompress a minute from the traffic or the congestion or whatever you're bringing in from the outside world, just to like, get grounded, get centered, get present so that you can come in and spend, you know, whether it's four minutes, five minutes, six minutes with the dying person and have it actually be quality time, mm -hmm. not, you know, this scattered energy um, because they're going to be, you know, they're going to be, have limited energy and, and limited um, time to see people. So let's make it, you know, as, as valuable as possible. Maybe the person can sit in the gratitude chair and think of, you know, a beautiful story that they remember from that person and, and be able to bring that in as an offering. Um, so those are some of the things that, that happen um, as death doula work. Um, yeah. <laughs> How did you get started with that? Well, when I came back from Guatemala, um, a good friend of mine is a, uh, a dentist. Um, we call her Dr. Laura. And um, somehow, you know, we, we kind of got reconnected and um, she had gone through this death doula training and um, I was fascinated by it. And mm. so um, she connected me with the organization. It's called INELDA, the End of Life Doula Association. And I went through their training. and. Um, yeah, I mean, we we had some we had a mutual friend. Dr. Laura and I had a mutual friend that had passed away, and we um, we both believed that he visited us, um, and so we kind of connected about that. And um, it was actually the anniversary of his death that we kind of reconnected and had you know just spoke about our relationship with him and you know how he was visiting us, and um, so that was really the impetus for it. That's very cool. 
That's very cool. I'd never heard of it before. And I mean, you know, I grew up in Ireland, so somebody dies, we celebrate it. Not the fact they've de- died, but we celebrate their life. You know, an Irish wake is one of those things that can go on for quite a long time. <laughs> and depending, you know, what age you were or anything else, it depends how big the funeral is and how big the wake is and how long it lasts. Um, they can go into a week. <laughs> um, you know, but that's the whole thing. We, I think when I came across this side of the pond, I found out that um, it's not always a happy thing and everybody sort of shuns you or might look mm. down on you if you think of it as being a happy occasion um, where it's like, you no, know, it should be a celebration that we actually were blessed to have this person in our lives, in our space right. or to know them right. um, as opposed to, oh, it's the worst thing that could happen. And it's so, d- you have to be very gloom. You have to wear all black. You have to be sad. It's like, no, exactly. I love your glitter station idea. I think that's fantastic. I mean, yeah, let's do face painting and have bouncy. Oh, yeah. Online, right. Let's go the yeah. whole out. Right. Why not? Um, I think, although, you know, if, if we get to a grand old age, uh, it might be a little bit dangerous for our friends to maybe break a hip on the bouncy castle. Maybe not the best way, but, you know, we could be sitting on the other side at that point, having a good old laugh at them. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're very somber when we talk about death, but it's like there's there's absolutely nothing to fear. Um, yeah. You know, and there's not all of this negativity that surrounds it. Um. I think it's been horribly marketed. To be oh honest. yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That needs a remarketing strategy. You know what? Hey, maybe I'm the one to do that. It says I've never thought about it like that. Thank you. That that's very interesting. Um, and and you know, I think it's like this whole thing of of um, help. You know, you know transitioning into life coaching and really I've worked with a few life coaches and just really, you know, focusing on living my best life and helping other people live their best life. That absolutely to me ties in with, with death and our look at on death. And, um, it, it's, you know, when I was, um, in my early thirties, a friend of mine, um, passed away and, we were not that close, you know, she was, we were acquaintances. Mm -hmm. Um, but her death really shook me up in a really positive way, you know? And I was like, you know what? Cause she died of like a freak thing overnight, you know, and, and then she was gone and that was it. And we were about, we were about the same age and she was young and healthy and, you know, and, that her death really helped me change the way that I was living. I was, I was working a lot. I was like not spending a lot of time in joy. And since then, you know, I've really been, I, I call myself full-time Paris paradise mode. Um, you know, it's like, I try to live like I'm on vacation every single day, whether that's, you know, a 10 minute beach walk or, doing something joyful every single day because it might be the last day so why not like you know enjoy and feel some you know spread the glitter you know it it I don't and that's really how I see it so um yeah it's like not fearing death and just realizing it's like this most it's the only thing that we actually all have in common Right. It's the most natural <laughs> part about living. Is that yeah. It ends at some part. Yeah. Right. And we celebrate birth. We celebrate birthdays. Why are we celebrating birthdays if we don't want to celebrate the end one? Yeah. Right. And it's funny, though, because even with my dad or mom or my sister that have all passed now, then basically I still celebrate their birthdays. Yeah. Um, but yeah it's 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 interesting and it it shouldn't be i mean i don't want anybody to be scared about or or have a a horrible thing at the same time i want to have a party yeah Um, i want people to have a wake now it's gonna be difficult if we're all all spread out around the world as we are um but i mean at one point um and i don't know whether it still is but i wanted the galaxy song by monty monty python's galaxy song played at my funeral yeah Um, there you go 
<laughs> but it's interesting when you're saying on, on all of the energy work and stuff that you're doing and and I do it as well and because uh, I do a lot of kinesiology and muscle testing for testing my the the pets and stuff that I help to see what's going on or what ailments or pains or issues that are going on and it's been through that that I've had some other people um information come through which has been super cool and almost sort of made more of a connection whereas whenever you die it's not over either because right. you can go into the whole you know we're coming back again or you know if we remember or we can do the you know like a regression hypno uh, i'm making up words now um hypnosis, hypnosis. yeah yeah or regress and find out what your your previous lives have been or you remember them in dreams or anything like that and you know we're never really we're always like oh you're crazy you're mental but talking about stuff like this but why not um, yeah, <laughs> that's what right. we do on this show we talk about things that nobody else will yeah <laughs> people know us for this now um but it's interesting how things come through and there's really not that big of a gap and there doesn't have to be that big of a gap from here to there it's just oh, yeah. your mind's open enough to it right um but i love that idea and i I mean, some of the things that you said about being a death duel and like granny's potluck anniversary and things like that are the kind of things where, you know, we've kind of, I've, I've been in different situations or with different families who do that kind of thing already. So is this something that's just trying to be re-educated or reintroduced to a younger generation, for example? Well, um, the legacy project could be so, could be, so many different things that's just one you know one idea is like the cookbook um but it's like what did you know really kind of talking to the person and and finding out like what did they really stand for like what did what was their life's work and and how do they want to be remembered with that um so a cookbook is like a very fairly simple way to explain that but it could be you know maybe they wrote poems their entire life and they're like in you know some secret location that you know we could go find it and put it together or um, um maybe there's um you know it's really just about listening to the person and finding out you know what they'd like you know and it could be yeah. that they you know maybe they want to make a painting that's for their for their family that could be passed around or yeah i mean uh, even just to be there whenever they're passing i know my brother was with my stepmom whenever she passed last december um which was difficult because he had to be all suited up like a hazmat guy to get into the nursing home oh, yeah right and that was yeah. that was back in ireland but bless him he was able to actually be with her um yeah. have you found that difficult with all of this nonsense that was going on with with even being able to see some of your your clients um, yeah or help them with their families because i think that's been one of the hardest things through this last period of time where some families aren't even getting to do that so yeah. have you been involved with them as well, as opposed to just the, the the person who's actually going to be passing? Well, I think you just said something key, really key. You said that he got to go be there and be with her, mm -hmm. right? There's something about that that is significant, right? And, um, you know, in at least in North American culture, when, when um, somebody passes away, um, maybe in their own home, even the protocol is like to instantly call 911, mm -hmm. get the body picked up within 24 hours, and then it's gone. And now it's, you know, getting made up and makeup and into the place. And, you know, it all happens really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. And there is something about being with that person, even if they, even if they're, they're transitioning or they've left. And I think it's also about advocating for your rights that you want one hour, two hours, three hours to just sit with that person before all the 
the planning starts, mm. right? To really be able to, to like sit in gratitude or sit in um, reverence for that person and really honor what they were there for. I mean, that's, you know, this is something that I hear over and over again is that, you know, uh, someone maybe calls their mom or dad, doesn't get a hold of them, goes to the house, breaks in, finds them, finds them, have, have passed away, doesn't know what to do. They call the authorities and the authorities immediately get yeah, that body yeah. out of there. And then it's like, you're now you're like in charge of all these things. Like all of a sudden your life just transitioned. And now you have to deal with like planning a funeral, pl selling the home, doing these things, making all these arrangements without getting that like two hours of just like, wow, my, my mom's passed, you know, let me feel that. Let me actually sit here and feel that before we get into this swirl of do, 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 do. And sure, I mean, COVID has absolutely impacted everything about the way that we um, do funerals. I just heard about a funeral that was in person, which is new, you know, it's kind of starting to happen again and everybody got COVID from it. So um, I've had, I've heard people going to Zoom funerals that actually were, you know, really fun, you know, and I've, you know, uh, I think the Zoom funeral is actually kind of a cool thing that, you know, if if someone, it's a, just a chance for the whole family to get together from across, you know, wherever they are and be able to, yeah, chat and celebrate that person together. And um, I've heard of online funerals going on for like 10, 12 hours. Like, how cool is that to like be with your cousins you know, my family, a lot of my family lives in, in Canada. So to be able to be on a whole Zoom call with my entire family, that would be really special. We don't, you know, we don't normally have a reason to do that, right? So um, yeah, definitely things are changing with the way that that works. But I think that even the Zoom funerals, um, there is an opportunity to really um, bring lightness and connection with that. That's it's quite a lot to deal with, isn't it? Um, yeah. It was difficult for, for me in a sense when both of my parents passed because I was on the other side of the pond. Um, so I never got to say that it was that whirlwind where I got the phone call, you start arranging flights, you get over there and you do your thing. Yeah. So, you know, it is, it's hard for sure. And certainly we don't take that time though, even when our pets, um, now I had my old guy put down here. He was put to sleep out on the deck. He wouldn't settle until we brought his bed out for him. So it was even knowing what they want whenever they're going. And yeah. I was actually contacted, um, through another client, it was referred to by a lady who knew um, it might have been close to the end, but just wanted to see whether I could do any communication with the animal for her to find out, you know, whether things are, were going to be okay and just lots and lots of things. And it was, it was very interesting to be a part of that mm. because I was actually able to just ask, all I do is ask simple yes or no questions to get answers and then ask, is that all you need? Or sometimes you'll just get a picture or some words put into your head or a visual of something to help you understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. And you can then sort of be that bridge, if you like, um, between the animal and their owner to help understand because Sadly, with what I do now, I get a lot of people who have basically found me as a last resort. Mm -hmm. That the vets have said, we don't know what else to do, or they've drawn a blank on everything, or 
you know, the dog's 12, 13, 14 years old, and they don't want to stick it on a whole load of pharmaceuticals with all the nasty side effects. Yeah. So they come to me and say, well, what else can you do? What else is there? We basically want to help with the pain and things like that, which I can do. But then, of course, I'm just starting to build a relationship with these people and their animals. And then they, I lose them. And it's so sad. Yeah. But at the same time, I now have to realize, well, that's where this journey is bringing me to. This is where I can still help and help a lot more meaningful rather than, oh, here's a bottle of dog shampoo. Right. And right. You know, oh, this one smells pretty or, yeah, you know, you can you can put a poodle top knot like this and. You know, I mean, that all had um, a place in the journey um, and certainly different things happened to, to take me away from the grooming as well with my own health and stuff. But where I am now, and that that's the thing, we don't talk about death. It sounds a little bit too somber and, and um, depressing, but it's certainly something that we should almost embrace you know, if somebody's yeah. had a good life or that dog's had a good life. And the, the thing is, is with the dogs, they almost, they don't want to tell you whenever it's close to happening. They don't want to tell you if there's certain things. And certainly the dogs with their owners themselves, they may say things to, to me without giving me permission to tell the owner. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened with me when I dealt with an animal communicator to talk to my guy because when it's your own animals it's very hard to sometimes get that connection because you're too close yeah so that's it's very interesting but for me to be able to do that it's it's a blessing in disguise in some ways just a blessing that I can offer that as a service and certainly for you to be able to do that you know you you sometimes I guess you'll you'll find out that um you, oh sorry there goes a little dog no somebody wasn't supposed to be moving around outside but they did dimitri i'm here you're not hearing voices from the other side it's just the man <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that folks in case you got ear splittingly um done with the the, the dog barking there but yeah it's, it's just interesting because neither you nor I am sure thought 10, 15 years ago that we'd be actually helping people with death. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, we didn't put on a big black cloak and start carrying a scythe all of a sudden. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a very interesting transition and, and development, if you like. Um, so it's, it's something though that I think is important. And um, whenever I saw this about the death, I was like, what is that? It sounds so intriguing. And um, yeah, just so people out there know that these services exist. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I, I think a lot of people don't know about it yeah. and don't even know to request one or don't know to even think that that might be something that they want. Yeah, I'd never heard of it before. So yeah, I mean, this has been completely eye-opening for me and I think it is lovely because at the same time as well, you can also be there, I'm sure, for people who don't have anybody else to be there. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's part of it is like, you know, uh, th that's, so people have fear of dying and people have mm -hmm. fear of dying alone. Yeah. Right? Those are like the two biggies. And, and then there's public speaking. Um, and, I, and then I think moving. <laughs> yeah, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, it's interesting. I actually, you know, I, I knew when, I remember when I was like in junior high thinking like, oh, everyone's afraid of public speaking. Like I'm gonna take that on. There you and go. Really, you know, and that's part of who the pet lady is, you know, it's like, I've been public speaking for a really long time and sure I get scared, but I just, I use that energy. I'm able to alchemize it and use it and, and channel it. And, um, and yeah, you know, who knew like, yeah, exactly. Like we've both had a path of, um, you know, promoting dog shampoos and it's like, 
well, what really matters here? Sure, like, right. yeah, take good care of your pet. Get the best shampoo, like, great, all good. And then what, you know, it's like, um, what else? Like, what else matters? And, and what else is meaningful? And how can I, how can I live that way? You know, I call it right livelihood. Um, it's kind of a Buddhist, uh, Buddhist way, but um, yeah, to just be in, in total alignment with like who I am and what do I stand for? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think it's become a lot clearer recently with a lot of people that they've started to step into themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of, uh, I mean, it's funny when you say the fear of public speaking and how I got over it or doing it was I was always a mimic as a child we would go to different countries or my aunts in England or um, different dialects, even in different parts of the country or, or the world. And whenever I was there, I would pick up the accent. So I was always a little bit of an entertainer in that sense that I could pretend to be something else or somebody yeah. else. And it was mostly to get a laugh. Sure. And so it was easy for me whenever I then started to do some seminars some years ago and teaching and, and different things along the way where I would just put on the act. I was going on stage. I was being this other person. Mm -hmm. So it was easy to pretend, if you like. Yeah. And coming back from that, it's just, well, no, you don't have to pretend to be anybody. Right. The more genuine you are, the more you'll attract the right people that you want to attract. So instead of doing all this people pleasing stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. All the spirit fingers. <laughs> yeah, love That's shower. Like my... <laughs> love shower. <laughs> Jazz hands. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 interesting. I think a lot of people are starting to really wake up to that and go, okay, well all this stuff's going on. I'm now in this position or this situation or this place in my life and going up till now, what was it worth? Yeah. Right. Right. What do I want to do? What makes me tick? Yeah. Right. And I love that you said as well, something as well that I've, I've started to really find joy in and even just this last six months to a year at most, where it's like, now there's a certain point of every day I try to pretend I'm on holiday. Yeah. Right. And yeah. it's great because I always love being on holiday and I haven't been able to go any for where for a while. So it's like, okay, well, what would I have done? I would have done this, or I would have done this a little bit longer than what I would normally do, or you know, sit and really enjoy your coffee in the morning. Yeah. Go out and hug the horses for an extra five minutes while you're doing their feed you know, go and, you know, have that walk in the woods or go to the beach or right. All, all the things yeah. do them for you. Yeah. Cause like you say, we don't know when our time's up. So um, yeah, I think we're sort of wrapping that up. We've gone around a whole circle, but it's been a pretty cool one. I think where we're talking about where we've come, where we're going, where we're headed and how we want to get there, I suppose. Um, I think I want to get there with a screeching halt and a smile on my face um, <laughs> <laughs> and a dog. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah, I, I think for me, it's been about slowing down. I mean, I also, I live in New York city. It's a very, you know, fast paced life. I mean, even if I just look at the way I even used to walk through Manhattan. I mean, I used to be like, you know, cutting, going as fast as I can, going around, cutting people off. I'm like on a mission, right? Yep. And then like, for what? What am I in a big rush for? And actually, you know, having pets, I think also helps, helps slow things down. You know, with my, with my two cats, like I take tons of breaks to like pet them and belly rubs and ear scratches and, I'm so grateful for that to, to be able to just slow down a little bit and appreciate the moment and, you know, and just feel good and feel like at ease and not be in this like super hyper productive mentality of like everything must get done right now. Right. Right. Exactly. I know. I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here and looking 
over there there's a cart full of um bottles of shampoo that need labeled but they've been needing labeled for three days yeah. right so what right the, it used so to they'll be... get labeled yeah exactly right, right. yeah um certain things just are slipping down the priority list they're still getting done but yeah. it's not life or death now to do right them. right and i think that's where everybody needs to ease off a little bit look at it take a breath stop breathe and just rejuggle what today needs to do for you yeah exactly dana this has been absolutely insightful and amazingly wonderful um I just want you to leave our listeners with some words of wisdom from you and let us all know how we can get a hold of you, get in touch, see you, find you, all the rest of it. Okay, great. Well, um, I can, I'll leave you with my favorite quote. Um, it's don't copy the world, be a different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think. Ooh, that's amazing. I love that. <laughs> I love that. So um, if people are looking for your help with the death doula um, or anything else for that matter, where can we find you? Uh, it's pretty easy. It's um, DanaHumphrey.com, D-A-N-A-H-U-M-P-H-R-E-Y.com um, or LifeCoachAndDeathDoula.com or ThePetLady.net or WhiteGatePR.com. Those are my, my places. You can also find me on Instagram at Dana K. Humphrey. Wonderful. And we'll put all of those links for everybody in the descriptions as well. So if you're seeing this on our YouTube bit shoot or anywhere like that, you'll get all of those down below so you can get a hold of Dana. And um, until the next time then, I want to thank you for being with us, Dana. I wish thank you God. all the best, all the success with the new book. And uh, I'll be sure to be getting a copy because I'm sure there's going to be lots and lots of tidbits of really good info in there and laughs I'm sure as well along the way so it'll be very very cool thanks very much for coming on the show and uh, absolute pleasure having you my honor to be here in greatness with the pet lady so thank you ever so much and thank you, um, thank you to everybody else for tuning in and um, we'll see you next time on quantum Years. and until then stay possum all information, products, and topics discussed in the show are simply the host and guest's personal opinions and are for informational purposes only. None claim to offer a diagnosis, treatment, or a cure. All listeners and viewers are encouraged to do their own research and consult with their own healthcare providers before changing or adapting any new protocols. Finesium Holistic Health, nor any of its entities, assume any responsibility or liability for any consequence relating directly or indirectly from the information contained within the podcast.